Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, a few weeks ago, I put together a list of what I felt were the worst CPU and GPU purchases of 2017. And boy, did that stir up some discussion. Still, overall, many of you really did seem to enjoy the discussion and therefore requested a best of version. So here it is, my best CPU and GPU purchases of 2017. Let's get into it. Right, so no surprises here then. The Ryzen 5 1600 is without a question this year's best value performance desktop processor. AMD slapped their most affordable 6-core 12-thread CPU with an MSRP of $220 US, though today you'll rarely pay more than, say, $200 US for one. The R5 1600 is really a bit of an all-rounder. There's no game it can't deliver perfectly smooth performance in, and we expect it to be good for many, many years to come. Then when it comes time to get serious, I'm of course talking about productivity workloads, nothing holds a candle to the R5 1600, not at this price point. It blasts through workloads with impressive efficiency, and you're looking really at paying almost twice as much from Intel for a similar level of productivity performance. To sweeten the deal, AMD's even thrown in a decent box cooler and has offered overclocking support on sub $100 B350 motherboards, making it an extremely cost-effective combo. The only buzzkill this year has been the cost of DDR4, but this affects all platforms, and with the R5 1600 just being so cheap, many have just taken the hit on memory pricing. As good as the R5 1600 is for productivity workloads, the Ryzen 7 1700 is even better, of course, because it does pack 33% more cores and threads. That said, though, in terms of value, it's not quite as good given you are paying 50% more for those extra cores and threads, but, you know, with time being money and all, the premium's probably worth it. In late 2017, Ryzen 7 might be a bit less impactful than, say, it was back in March when it was released for the first time, but it still deserves to make our list. When it landed all those months ago, consumers seeking an 8-core 16-thread CPU were faced with paying $1,000 US for the Core i7-6900K, so it's important to look back and see where we've come from. The R7-1700 can now be purchased for less than a third of that price at $300 US, and as a result, the 6900K was retired. Now we have the Core i7-7820X for a more affordable $600 US, though, I'd argue that the Ryzen 7 1700 is still a much better value product. Again, the Ryzen 7 CPU can be paired with relatively inexpensive motherboards, and while you can put them on B350 boards, even a nice X370 board can be had for as little as $130 US. Meanwhile, the cheapest X299 boards, they come in at around $200 US. So for those that have a lot of work to get done, but don't want to spend big to get it done, Ryzen 7's the answer to their prayers. Rounding out my AMD appreciation video is the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X. For just shy of $1,000, you get a 16-core 32-thread CPU. Now, remember, at the start of 2017, as I just said, an 8-core CPU would set you back $1,000. A 10-core CPU, though? Well, 10 cores was just scary. The Core i7-6950X came in at an asking price of $1,750 US. Today, though... Well, today Intel cries itself to bed, remembering the good times. So a grand now lands you twice as many cores and threads when compared to earlier in the year. Aware that Threadripper was incoming, Intel rushed their X299 platform into the wild so they could strike first. The only problem being that their 16-core 32-thread beast will set you back $1,700. Uh, and while it is faster than the 1950X, I'd say you still have to spend around $1,200 to $1,400 US on the 12 or 14 core models to get 1950X like performance. There are a number of disadvantages to the Threadripper platform when compared to Skylake X, but ultimately I feel like it provides consumers with the most bang for their buck, and it's where I'd invest my money if I was after a high-end workstation. Okay, so I'd just like to point out that due to the way things have gone in the second half of the year, 
this pick's a bit sketchy, I'll admit. Unfortunately, the once great value Pentium G4560 is kind of no longer, at least in most regions, due to pricing. So while the previous AMD processors that I talked about 100% deserve to make this list, this one's a bit more iffy. <laughs> The G4560, which I commonly refer to as the only KB Lake CPU worth buying, burst onto the scene in January, and at the time, I reviewed the hell out of it. In fact, I was so obsessed with the value of the G4560 that a lot of viewers more favourable to the red variety CPUs, let's say, were getting a bit upset. I still don't care, though. How can you not love what the G4560 offered back in the first half of the year? Prior to its release, a dual-core hyper-threading enabled Intel CPU cost at least twice as much, so at $64 US, the G4560 was a steal, and really nothing could touch it in terms of value. It was so good, in fact, that it wiped out pretty much the rest of Intel's own KB Lake Pentium and Core i3 lineup. Intel apparently caught wind of this, though, and despite denying it, started to limit supply midway through the year. Cryptocurrency miners were blamed for the shortage, but even today, Intel seems in no hurry to offer the G4560 at $64 US again. Today, bargain hunters are faced with a less desirable asking price of $80 US, and in my opinion, you're better off getting the Ryzen 3 1200 at that price. Now, the final nail, though, in the G4560's coffin was the arrival of the Core i3-8100, which is essentially a Core i5-7400 for 35% off. Of course, we still need affordable 300 series motherboards for it to be really worth the investment, that is the Core i3-8100, but the writing's certainly on the wall. I will say, though, for $64 US, the G4560 is still a good buy. Of course, you've just got to find one for that price. If you stick it on a $50 H110 board, you have a killer combo for a smidgen over $100. Considering you can't even get a Z370 board for that price, the combo does still have merit, despite the lack of an upgrade path. Out of stock, out of stock, and yep out of stock. They're the words just about every would-be Core i 7 k owner has been faced with for the past month. It's certainly a frustrating situation. It means that while purchasing an 8700K has been next to impossible, those that have probably overpaid. At the time of making this video, which was probably a few days before it was actually released, the Core i7 8700K was listed for around $420 US. The MSRP, though, is of course $360 US, so that's a $60 US price premium. So right now, the Core i7 8700K is overpriced and out of stock, so why in the world is it on my list of best CPU purchases in 2017, you might ask? Well, that's a pretty good question. I guess I'm just hoping that by next month, uh, these issues will be corrected. Of course, Intel is working on bringing additional facilities online to improve Coffee Lake supply, so hopefully we will see a result of that very shortly. So while the 8700K hasn't really been the best CPU purchase of 2017 yet, unless you were lucky enough, of course, to get one at the MSRP, I'm hoping that it will be a really good purchase shortly. Uh, supply issues aside though, the Core i7-8700K is the best mainstream desktop CPU in existence today, especially if you're a gamer seeking, you know, no compromise type performance. The Ryzen 5 1600 or even the Ryzen 7 1700 might be better value options for those using, you know, mid-range to high-end gaming hardware, but for those with something like a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti seeking maximum frame rates, the 8700K will deliver soon when it's in stock. Uh, the best GPU purchases of 2017. I have to admit, having put the title for this section of the video in Word, I kind of just sat there staring at the screen for like 10 minutes, uh, trying to work out what notes to make, or what notes I could even make. Had it been 2016, I might have said something along the lines of like the Radeon RX 470 was an exceptional sub $200 US buy, while the RX 480 offered competitive mid-range performance with a nice big 8GB frame buffer, and then talked about how the GeForce GTX 1070 and 1080 offered unchallenged high-end performance. 2017 though, well, despite AMD releasing far more products this year, I have to say overall it's been less eventful, at least in my opinion. The Radeon RX 500 series was mostly a rebadged job, in fact, the underwhelming RX 550 was the only truly new GPU. Ah, uh, then we have Vega. Vega, Vega, Vega. 
probably don't need to go into that one uh, in too much detail again. I feel like Vega is still quite promising, but unfortunately, like so many of AMD's products, it will likely become an amazing secondhand deal in a few years' time. Vega 56 is competitive, and it probably would have made this list had custom board partner cards been available. So with nothing from AMD really hitting home for me this year, it was again the GeForce 10 series show, and although the GeForce GTX 1070 and 1080 are technically 2016 products, they were still some of the best buys in 2017. The 1070 Ti is another solid product that offers strong value for overclockers, though it's also a product that we didn't really need. For me, the GPU of 2017 was the mighty GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. It might cost $700 US, and while we could certainly sit around complaining about GPU prices all day, that doesn't change the fact that it's a beast. For the same price, AMD's Radeon RX Vega 64 Liquid can't hold a candle to the GTX 1080 Ti in almost every game out there. Vega may end up being the superior GPU in a few years' time, we don't really know, but what we do know right now is that the GTX 1080 Ti is king. So it was a bit of a wash in 2017. AMD won out on the CPU front. Can't, still can't believe I'm saying that, but yeah, it's my opinion they did. Uh, while Nvidia won the GPU war this year quite convincingly. Had AMD been able to mass produce Vega earlier in the year and enable board partner cards to be created, though I do recognise that HBM2 supply is the issue here, things might have looked a bit different on the GPU front. Likewise, had Intel been able to ramp up supply of their Coffee Lake CPU sooner and of course offer motherboards featuring their budget chipsets, then things on the CPU front would have looked quite different as well. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Let me know what your top CPU and GPU picks of 2017 look like in the comment section below. I'm your host Steve, see you again next time guys.